So thank you very much for coming um, to the Town Hall. It, this is the first Town Hall of two in the month of May. So the next one's going to be the 30th. Um, so the um, format of this is going to be, I'm going to do a bit of an introduction and, and talk about some of the key principles. And then the start of the show is going to be Andy, who's going to talk about the support when we're, al when we're, um, when we're live. And also, Tom is going to do some um, bit on training, both pre-go live and post-go live. So um, we are being recorded. So anybody who asks a question, uh, just be mindful that uh, your voice will be be recorded. Okay. So we are definitely going live on the third of June, and that is in 18 days' time. So um, we are really up against it now. We are working extremely hard. Um, we will make sure that, um, that everything is in place uh, for Monday the 3rd of June. Um, at the moment, we're, we've started our cutover, so that's actually transferring all of the data out of the legacy systems into the new system. And that means that your operational um, cutover deadlines have actually passed. Um, so there's no more working in, in the legacy system. Um, there is one um, outstanding one, and that's um, research contracts. Um, any new research contract, contracts can st and, and grants can still be received up until tomorrow, but then anything after that will have to be put in to the new system on the, um, on the 3rd of June. Um, just something to pass um, through to our academic colleagues, and that's about the PURE system. So the Pure will actually close down from the 3rd of June to the 14th of June, just to um, when we sort out the data feeds to Pure, which means that if any academic needs to upload his publications or do anything else, they should do that before the 3rd or after the 14th. So if you could pass that on, that I'd be grateful. But it really is all systems go. As I say, we've actually started now moving the data into, into the new systems. So I thought it would be beneficial um, just to go through some of the, um, the key um, overarching principles of New Core. I won't spend a lot of time on it, but when I'm going around talking to heads of school, etc., we still rehearse these because they're still important and we still get questions about them. Um, and I think remembering these will help when we actually come to, um, to the live system, to using the live system. So the first thing to reiterate, everybody knows this, it's a self-service system. It's about you taking personal responsibility for doing stuff yourself in the system. It's not about asking somebody else to do it, it's about you doing it. It's all about standardised processes. Um, the, the process will be the same no matter where you are in the university. And it's about going and understanding how that new process will work. It's not about bucking the system, it's following that new process. Oracle has billions of users across the globe. So it is easy to use, but it's about those standard processes, standard workflows. And it is about moving from pre prevention to detection. So whereas um, the current situation, it's a lot about checking everybody's work that come, that's gone before you, a lot of handoffs to various things. This is not that. We are trying to um, streamline um, the, uh, the system to make it much more, uh, uh, to flow much better. And that means that we're, we've cut out several uh, approval layers. Um, and that's because we can see what's going on in the system. And so um, we can do lots of reporting, lots of audit about the um, activities that have been going on. So we don't necessarily need all of those approval points. And the other thing to remember is that it's a role-based system. So the roles that you are assigned in the system will determine what you can do in the system. Um, I'll come back um, and talk about roles because it's important just to reiterate those because clearly that's, that's one of the really important aspects of the system. Um, this is the long and winding road. So this isn't the end of a journey. Um, it's the end of the implementation journey, but it's actually the start of the user experience journey. It's going to be um, a, a, a different journey. It's going to be bumpy when we first go live. It's going to be, it's very difficult, as you can imagine, to um, design and implement and configure a system for, you know, over 8,000 members of staff. 
so that we, we won't have got everything right. It will be a bit bumpy. But one of the things that Andy's going to talk about is if you experience any of those bumps, what you do um, post Go Live. Um, so it, but it is really important to, to understand that Go Live is a journey. We will um, work probably three to six months where we are trying to stabilise the system. So that's, that will be the bumpiest period. And then after that, um, we will make any, any changes that, that we need to make. And the one thing to say is that we know that the system that goes live on the 3rd of June, in a year's time, it won't look anything like we've got um, on the 3rd of June. It will change. It will evolve. And that's not just because it's updated every quarter, but that's because we will change the way um, that the system works to, um, to make it more uh, amenable to uh, the way we want to do business. So there are opportunities to make minor tweaks and to change roles, etc. cetera. Um, but this role, this journey will continue, particularly, as I said, with the quarterly updates which means that the processes will change inevitably, but they will always remain cutting edge, and that's really why we've, we've invested in this system. So role structures. Um, I think we all know that um, the roles that we're allocated will determine what we can do in the system, what we can see in the system, and the reports we can get out of the system. You, you don't just have one, necessarily have one role in the system, you can have um, several roles. You can be a manage, um, an employee, you can be a line manager, hiring manager, etc. Et Some roles are auto-assigned, -assign, for example, employee. We're all employees of the universities, therefore we automatically get that role. But other roles we have to um, allocate um, in the system. And we've um, we finished the role mapping work that we did, and thanks to many of you who uh, contributed to that. And so those roles were actually hardwired uh, into the system in, in April. Um, these are the roles that you can have within the system. Um, I won't go through them now. Um, there is um, detail on every one of these roles on the internet, and so it's definitely worth um, um, familiarising yourself with that um, so that you can understand which are the best roles for you. So, as I say, we're preparing for Go Live. There's lots of resources. I won't go through this in any detail because Andy will talk about, uh, about some of it and, and, and Tom will talk about the, the training that we've got um, both leading up to Go Live and afterwards. Um, we all know about our super users. It's important that you familiarise who those are in your, in your area. There will be lots of um, ongoing um, support for Go Live, so there's lots of uh, communications going out. You will have seen there's some all staff emails planned, there's some briefing packs, those can be used to tailor um, local comms um, in your own areas. Um, and um, there will be, as I say, the super users um, and your finance and, and HR colleagues will also be there to help. And of course there will be the, um, the IT service desk. So that's really all I wanted to say. It is an exciting time. Um, we will be, um, the, 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 the noise leading up to um, go live, I think, will, will increase as, as we get closer. But we're all looking forward to it. I think now, um, I think everybody wants it to be here so that we can try and, and, and test the system and, and see how it is. But I want to hand you over now to Andy Ferguson, who's going to tell you all about um, the support that, that will be in place post Go Live. Just thank you very much. <coughs> Can people hear me at the back? If my voice starts to get really croaky, I apologise in advance. Um, I had no voice yesterday, so let's see how long it lasts today. So, as Charlotte said, what we're going to talk about today is when things go wrong or when people need help, where do they go? So we have a number of different places that people can go. I'm going to, to a certain extent, gloss over the campus support for super users. Are you going to touch on those later on, Tom? So I'm not going to steal Tom's thunder on those two. But what I will say about both of those, they are incredibly important. All the things that I'm going to talk about today are not going to work unless we've got those two wonderful resources sitting in front of us. Because supporting something like this is huge. 
we've implemented a few systems here that everyone at the university could use. This is really the first one we've done that everyone's got to use. So our, our potential user base for support is everyone here and everyone else. So we thought we would try and make it as easy as possible for you. So I'm sure that you all know where you would go for help now with an IT system. And that would be the IT service desk. And I've got the of them sitting almost at the back of IT collectors. So at the moment, you'd phone the, if you wanted to phone someone, you would phone the service desk number. And you get a number of options on a phone menu. And you pick the one most suitable for what it is that you're calling about. That's not going to change much. But what I would say is, if you're used to pressing a certain option, listen to all of them, because there are going to be more on there from the 3rd of June. So it's the same number, but just make sure you pick what it is that you're actually calling about. I'll show you why that's important later on. And we have the website, the United Service Desk website, which you use to log service desk calls now. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to put another block of content on the front from the 3rd of June just to signpost some of the resources that are available to help you. So on there we'll have a link to the system, links through to Canvas, to knowledge base articles. And then on the right hand side we will list any other items that might help you. And the bottom one is what I really want to talk about today is report an issue. So what I'm going to do is just show you that now. Very similar to how you run the service desk call at the moment. We are asking a couple more questions. And what we what we're really interested to find out at the point that someone asks for help is have they looked at Canvas and have they talked to their super users? Uh, it would really, just be really useful to get a feel for that information. The rest of the form is almost identical to what you fill in now when you've got a, um, an IT font. Um, but there is one difference. Instead of going through to the IT service desk, all of these calls will go through to a dedicated team that we've put in place just to support new call. So we're going to have three full-time staff who will be running our lines from 8am to 6pm Monday to Friday and those three people will just be dealing with support calls to do new calls. And that's where all, all everything that comes to this form will go. So I'm just going to leave this up here while I talk around, it's quite a lot of stuff here but don't worry about it, it's all <coughs> I just want to talk you through how the various bits of support are going to work. So, if you look at this, how I like to see it, you've got your self-service on the left and you've got suppliers on the right. Now, what we ideally want to do is to fix as many things as we can as far left as we can. There's two main reasons for that. It's a really good customer experience for people to get their problem fixed with the first point of contact. <coughs> and it's cheaper. So, ideally, as Charlotte's already touched on, self-service is what this whole system is about. We want people to help themselves, we want people to use the system to help themselves, and to use Canvas to find out how to do things. The super users would be our second line there, that if someone needs a person to talk to who knows a little bit more about the system than they do, that's where our super users fit in. Then we have our dedicated first line support team. And they will be the ones that if you phone up for support on any of the new call systems, they are the ones that um, you would talk to. And it's their job to either help you, or more importantly, to know who else can. So their main role is to triage work to other teams, to signpost to other departments, to get the, the question and the query to where it needs to go as quickly as possible. So they will 
they will do what the service desk does, but they will do it <coughs> for a subset of systems. And they'll be sitting with the service desk, and hopefully there'll be a bit of knowledge transfer and everyone getting to know about everything else during the hypercare period. And then I'm not going to go too much into second and third line support, but I'm sure you all know, I don't think this is a secret, that the IT service desk don't fix every single IT issue in the university. Getting some players now. Um, there's a lot of other teams sitting behind them, probably about 100 different groups of people that do IT stuff at the university. It's the service desk's job to know what all of those 100 teams does and how to get work to them. Thankfully, my team is only going to triage for about 10 of those. So we're kind of a little bit happier at the moment. And we will also have a second line support functional team. So this, this is for the more business orientated queries. So as well as technical support, we're going to have functional support and any call could go to one of those two groups of teams. Now behind them, we have technical experts, what we call third line support, who do really hard IT magic that I can't really describe, but um, they, they will all be in place as well to support this. <coughs> and between everyone on there, we think we've probably got over 500 people who are spending at least some proportion of their time supporting the system from the gym. Some of those are 100%, some of those are a lot less, but it's a lot of people. But that's what I think we actually need to have because you're all going to be using this. You're all going to have questions. And even if this is the perfect implementation, the best system in the best university, it's still going to be a little bit bumpy because it's new. And sometimes getting used to things that are new takes a while. It's okay, because this as it stands, this hyper care support model, that's going to be in place until September. And the first line support team will be here until just before Christmas. So plenty of time to actually get this system embedded into the university and get you all working with it. I think that's it for me. I'll hand over to Tom. Andy. <coughs> Right, let's talk about training. Um, I get uh, on presentations, on classroom training, a lot of questions around what the training is going to look like. Uh, we kind of have preview all live in there, but that's literally the next 18 days, so not, not much to talk about there. Uh, but most importantly, post go live, um, what that support is going to look like. So um, May, at the moment, is very much on schedule. Uh, so we are running the last refresher sessions uh, in classrooms. Uh, for those of you who have received those uh, uh, th that training uh, for the previous go live date, um, and we also continue with drop-ins, uh, we noticed that the attendance on drop-ins have picked up uh, dramatically. I would say uh, you get a lot more attendance. Uh, probably what helps with that is actually removing the ability to for you to do your jobs by switching off all the systems. Uh, so I think that helps. Uh, so um, that is great to see. Uh, a lot more people are engaging uh, with us, uh, with the system, finding out about new core. So that is set to continue until the end of May. In June, we're going to try something new. Uh, we will have uh, something called surgeries, uh, which will be kind of a mix between a classroom and a drop-in. Uh, so we kind of mi mix them, uh, mix them both, and this will effectively be drop-ins but organized in clusters. So we have booked large computer clusters uh, that you will be able to uh, drop into uh, for a particular <coughs> session. I'm gonna talk about the sessions in a minute. And log in to the, uh, onto the computer as yourself. And the idea behind it is you log in as yourself, you be using your ADF login and details, and you access new core in order to do your transactions, whatever you want to do, whatever you came uh, there to do. So you kind of effectively learn by doing. Um, 
with support and help available uh, to kind of walk around uh, that particular cluster. So uh, uh, Joe and I, uh, the trainers, Nico trainers, will be there supporting you with your transactions. I'm going to uh, ask the super users, uh, some super users, to also come and help me with that uh, because these are big uh, clusters. And because it's a drop-in, I, I cannot say how many people will come. Uh, so when we have a cluster of uh, 70 or 70 might be occupied, we'll see. I don't know what the uptake of that is going to be, but it is there for everybody to take advantage of. So please uh, take advantage of it or uh, let your colleagues in your departments know about the surgeries uh, because ultimately it is there for you to, uh, to use. So what we'll have is uh, sort of a, surgeries are broken down into uh, four sessions. Uh, we're going to have an employee one line manager on, hiring manager, and then fourth session on basically everything else. Um, so this is mirroring the classroom sessions that we ran around uh, those access roles on the system. Uh, so the employee one, uh, the idea is the first roughly 45 minutes will be uh, spent on what is considered the HR uh, functionality available to you as part of your employee role. So we'll be looking at personal information, updating those details, uh, putting through your annual leave, uh, retrospective annual leave, because as you, we will all know, we will have to do that uh, on the system. So you will get uh, direct support with that. And then the latter 45 minutes of that session uh, will be spent on what's considered the finance functionality, raising requisitions, uh, and also maybe some expense claims if you have uh, kept those receipts uh, in your drawers and then you can take them out and submit your claims uh, there and then. Uh, so the total length of that session is going to be 90 minutes, uh, but I kind of uh, try to give you some guidance around the timings so that you do not have to come and sit for the full uh, 90 minutes. Maybe you just want to raise a requisition, then you can uh, come uh, for the, uh, the last 45 minutes, the second half of that particular session, uh, just to do that. Then we're going to have the line manager session. Uh, so that one is going to be focused at the beginning, sort of first 10, 20 minutes. I don't think uh, it will take much longer than that. On uh, responding to notifications from uh, your direct reports. So they will be submitting those claims, those annual leave requests, uh, those expense uh, claims as well. And then uh, you'll be able to go in and uh, get help on how to respond, how to approve, how to reject uh, those notifications. and then. Uh, the last uh, portion of the session will be uh, focused on all those different tasks that you as line manager can do on behalf or for those direct reports. Uh, so maybe submit other uh, absence requests, maybe change manager, maybe change location, maybe do uh, uh, upload the document, submit a regrading proposal. There's lots uh, that we can put in that box. Um, so that's how that particular session is going to be structured. Again, 90 minutes just come for your approvals and then leave, or you can just come for the uh, last part of the session and learn uh, what else you can do on the system as my manager uh, on that session. Third, third one is going to be Harry Manager. I'm expecting that one to be quite, quite popular. Um, so what we will do is we will just focus on raising the recruitment requisitions. So uh, as you know, this will replace uh, what we now uh, call AD1s, raising the AD1 forms. Going forward, we'll be raising the uh, recruitment requisitions. Uh, so we will pretty much focus on that, uh, how to set that up, because nobody will have uh, any uh, live requisitions to, to review. Uh, so uh, all 90 minutes will be spent uh, on doing that. It's a lengthy process. Those of you who have, have attended uh, the sessions know that it's a lengthy process. So uh, we will spend all 90 minutes on that. And then finally, my kind of catch-all sessions uh, they'll be all about other roles. So we have uh, the project analyst, financial analyst, the ops manager, uh, head of school, head of college. I'm not expecting many to turn up, but who knows? Maybe they will. Uh, uh, those reporting roles, uh, how to do those. And again, have a look at our internet page because there's a full schedule available of all of those, including all those different timings, uh, dates, and locations uh, for you to drop in. Uh, so do check them out. Uh, that's what we will do. Uh, pretty much month of June is going to be focused on the surgeries. We will still run some drop-ins because they have remained very, very popular. So they will continue to be uh, run throughout June. And what I have also put in there, it's kind of, you, you, you've 
seen this uh, before on this presentation, reiterating again that uh, once we go live, that your super users uh, will be your first port of call, and so will be a Canvas e-learning. Uh, so the surgery is, again, recommended for those of you who maybe don't feel very confident. Uh, you know what you're doing, but don't feel very confident, or maybe you're just completely just not engaged, and you have, may have colleagues or may know people in your departments who have not engaged. Uh, I think surgeries could be a perfect way to get them introduced uh, to Nucor in this way very quickly, log it out themselves, do something on Nucor where it matters, uh, and then learn in this way. Beyond July, and I kind of intentionally left July out of it slightly, um, because I'm going to see the first week, maybe two, of June, what happens. Uh, I'll see the uptake of the surgeries, I'll see um, uh, the reaction, I'll see feedback, and then I will decide very quickly, you won't have to wait long, exactly how to structure July uh, to meet uh, those demands. And it, it will in part become obvious, but in other parts you will tell me uh, as part of the feedback, and we'll also have feedback uh, mechanism for super users to as well um, tell me exactly what July should look like. But beyond J July, it's kind of clearer uh, picture. We're going to come back to the traditional model of training delivery. So we will um, have classrooms, uh, classroom training uh, open, but this time for anyone to book. But obviously availability will be limited. Uh, at that point, there's only going to be one trainer uh, on Newcore available. Um, and you are looking at him. Uh, so, uh, limited availability, but I will manage, uh, manage that as we come. So, I'm expecting there will be some waiting lists. Obviously, there will, we will have new starters. They will have to be picked up. They will have to be trained. Uh, so, uh, you, get the, uh, you get the gist. Drop-ins will still continue um, from start to finish. Uh, very popular uh, way to um, acquire the, the knowledge and the information in a really time-efficient way. Cannot see phasing them out. I think we will do it. However, the re frequency will be reduced, but it will be ongoing. And that is something that is key, and the main key takeaway uh, from this session. Uh, we're going live. It's a huge milestone for the project, but the work will never end. We will still continue developing uh, the software. We'll still continue developing our processes around uh, that technology. Um, so the training will have to adapt. Uh, we will have to adapt. Uh, so the main, main point that I'm trying to make is this is going to be very much an ongoing commitment uh, from us, uh, from the new core team, uh, to uh, continue providing that support. So uh, that's it for me. Uh, we'd like to open the discussion for any questions that you may have um, to myself, Charlotte, Andy. Uh, so go ahead. Surgery is it, is it like you expect people to sort of gather up an actual piece of work that they have to physically do and then wait and then come to the surgery and physically do the work in front of them? I did. So, for example, so if you when grant application costing or, or something like that, you would potentially go to the surgery. So, let's say maybe we will all be asking you, as an example, uh, to submit your retrospective annual leave because we cannot migrate that data. Some people will be like, okay, I'll sit down and submit it because I know how to do it. I've been in the classroom. Uh, I've, that's, I've seen it. I, I saw it on the drop-in, and they will just do it. Others may have not engaged at all. Suddenly, it will just be dropped on them. I'll be like, okay, what do I do? Um, others um, kind of might fall in the middle. They saw something, but they are still not feeling confident. They can come to an employee drop-in, sit down, they bring their, their annual leave form, and we can sit uh, down with them. Uh, some content could be projected to show the steps, but uh, support will be available kind of a, as a, a floor walkers, if you like, uh, to help individuals uh, put those transactions through on their accounts. That's the idea behind it. So absolutely, the answer is yes. Bring your work with you uh, to those sessions to build that confidence, use the system, and actually do it so that uh, things actually start happening again. Because uh, at the moment nothing's happening because it's all switched up. So uh, yeah, uh, 
get you up to speed with, uh, with that functionality. And that's how I think this should be uh, sold to everyone. So if you could tell your colleagues uh, in your area, that would be great. Um, my understanding is that all staff will be given access to the system. Um, so a couple of questions. Um, all um, new staff will they automatically get access? And also, PGR students, only so many of those will be given access for ordering. Um, will we need to request that, and will that be an option with the service desk from Go Live to, to be able to request access? So I'll, ask, I'll answer the question about the PGRs. Um, there's about 300 that are going onto the system for Go Live. The reason they've been selected is because they're active in Proactis, and so that's how we've got the names. I have actually requested uh, the name so that you. Um, of, so you know who from your areas is actually going to be on the, uh, on the system. In order to get new PGRs or existing PGRs, but who are not on the system, it will be through the, the help desk. Okay. Yeah, get in touch with us and we'll pass the request on to the local people to get that sorted out. What was the first bit? The um, for staff, for new staff, will they automatically be given a login on the system or will that be a request to login? Um, any any new starter will be able to log in um, once their account is processed. So, yeah. so in, induction wise, uh, a pod are doing a central induction where all new starters are always invited to, and new core has a table, and that table will be. Uh, Man, so all the uh, all the new starters that, that come to the central induction, I appreciate may not be all of them, uh, but that could be their kind of first introduction to new core, where all those support mechanisms, training, uh, will be explained to them exactly what they need to do, and then they will be able to take it from there. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I would advise, um, obviously, uh, when you are getting new staff, you are doing induction, local induction to them, uh, for them. Uh, I would make uh, telling them about new core part of that induction because obviously, as soon as they get their account, they will also get access to new core and they will be able to start using them. Uh, so you might use a mix of super user support and Canvas, kind of in the in the in the interim. But obviously, there will also be the option to. Uh, book the classroom again, limited availability, there will be some drop-ins. Uh, so it, it is signposting uh, those uh, members of staff to those uh, mechanisms. So the, uh, the new core website is not disappearing anywhere. Uh, all of that is going to be there with all the links, all the support. Uh, so you can use that and make that part of your local induction, almost like have an A4. This is what you can do uh, to get yourself up to speed with new core and if more help is available then obviously we will be contactable and uh, we can we can prioritize uh, some stuff over others on those classroom trainings if, if that is what is needed. Um, if I can just add to that, I think from an HR perspective when somebody joins they'll get a, 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 a welcome uh, contact because one of the first things they will have to do is get onto the system and put their own bank details and where they're okay. Um, so that should be quite an immediate mm. thing that they're aware of or they tell us to go find out how to do it but will be an incentive to get them to start playing. Thank you. That is role based. As long as you have the role, right role, then you'll be able to run this report. And you use the, the, the kind of the, the phrase budget holder. We're going <coughs> to kind of try to get away from that concept a little bit of budget holding uh, as, a, as, a, as a concept, but that is kind of something that will um, happen further down the line. We will obviously have budgets, we will have a mechanism to, to um, capture those costs using those seven segments, those of you who have attended training know what I'm talking about, the, the accounting code structures and so on. Uh, we're kind of moving away from, from the, uh, oh, somebody is holding the budget, 
because it is role based. As long as you get the role, you have the ability to run those reports. So if that is required, then uh, all we need is to give you that role. And that's okay if you're initially not um, allocated that role, it can be changed? Yes. So if, if you find a need that you yeah. haven't got a particular role that you need, yeah. again, it will be through the help desk. Okay. Well, theoretically, we theoretically yeah. I mean, but we, we don't know how much traffic we're going to yeah. get in the early days, so it's difficult to um, estimate that. Yeah. yeah, it's just about core volume. You yeah. know, the, the actual mechanism to assign someone a role is, is quite straightforward. But to perhaps, hopefully, maybe put your minds at ease, it is going to be, as far as the nuclear team is concerned, all hands on deck. Mm. It really will be. We know what's coming. Uh, we call it hypercare for a reason. Uh, it's a phase on projects, and it's not the first project that um, people would have in Europe have implemented in the past. They know how this works. Uh, it is going to be uh, um, increased effort from our side as well. So uh, appreciate what you're asking is give us an SLA. It will depend, but we are going to put extra effort uh, into that. So hopefully you will not have to wait too long for your for your fixes. Answers no. no. <laughs> so uh, every employee has has um, the ability to requisition. Clearly, managing that process has to be an internal process. So um, you know, it will have you'll have to set some rules internally uh, for your own staff. The, the way I always explain it on, on training is just because you have an ability to do something on the system doesn't mean that you should. Um, there are people that we employ uh, just to do a certain job, let's say, in, I don't know, an administrator, and, and, and that is the person who is expected to be raising those requisitions, no one else. Uh, so obviously it is part of the employee role to help us. Uh, it just makes things easier because you do not have to manage those separate access and then click a button for every single person of should we give it to them, should we not give it to them, and so on. Uh, but sh should they do it? So uh, it comes back to what Charlotte said. Uh, you will set out those rules internally, whatever works for you. I have another question. <laughs> Go for it. So again, when somebody is buying, I understand that at the beginning there will be a default account, which would be first the school one school default account. But if somebody is usually buying a research account, let's mm -hmm. assume, could that be set up to become the default account? When somebody's logging in, is the last, you know, the default one won't continue to be the school one, but continue to be whatever the research account is normally used. The way the defaults work is that the account that you can set up as the default is the seven segment account. So you can change that department to a different one, but because the accounting or project works differently, you cannot set those accounts as default because it's a different set of accounting rules. It's a poet code, it's not the seven segments, it's a different, we can change the seven segments, the default ones, but not the project. So unfortunately you're gonna to have to pick those uh, one by one, but then the, I guess the, maybe the saving grace, uh, particularly I know that works on the expenses pages, is once you put those uh, details there, uh, when you raise the next claim, it will re the system will remember those details that you put in there. So that could help a little bit, uh, but that's how the goals work. So um, that is going to be on the IT service desk service catalog. So there will be some new items appearing on the 3rd of June. Um, and I, I believe that's going to be one of the ones that's 
the position management is going to be the top one. But there is a way uh, for putting it out there because there's a lot of people uh, hearing this. There is a way for managers, line managers, to check uh, their position numbers for existing posts because obviously we all will have our um, uh, accounts migrated. Uh, the position numbers will be already there. Uh, there is a way for you to check that, and that is on the line manager dashboard when you run, run the staff FTE report. On the staff FTE report, line managers will be able to see, and it's a third column on that report, what their position number is for all the different roles that they manage. So that will be quite helpful uh, for those of you who need to know their position numbers because you're talking about recruitment and putting that position number in. There's a way to check. And I've updated the hiring manager page on Canvas to include that information and also with a link to the e-learning simulation showing you how to access that report. So it's already there. Okay, so are there any last questions? No, well, I hope that session has reassured you that there is a lot of support being put in place for when we do go live. Um, don't forget this, the last town hall before go live is the 30th. Um, we have, have we got a, <coughs> a venue yet? Uh, yep. <laughs> so it's the lecture theatre in Muirhead, and we think we're going to do it around busting some myths, some of the stuff you hear out there about Newcore, which simply isn't true.